Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2013. In this section we're going to look at the PowerPoint 2013 workspace in a little bit more detail. Now the first thing I want to do is to look again at Backstage View. So click on the File button, that takes us into Backstage View and the main categories of things that we can do in Backstage View are listed down here on the left. Now some of these we're going to be looking at in a lot of detail later on but I just want to concentrate for the moment on the main ones and generally introducing you to the ideas behind Backstage View. The fundamental idea behind Backstage View is that it's the area where you do things to a presentation that aren't actually part of the presentation. I'll give you a good example of that, one of the things you can do from Backstage View is to print a presentation. Now if I select the print option in Backstage View I get a lot of other options that I can select from. So I can choose for example which printer I want to use, how many copies I want to print and various other settings. And we'll be looking at the print option in quite a bit of detail later on in the course. But the important thing here is that having chosen print we then have a number of print options to choose from and we can control specifically the way that we print a particular presentation. Now each of the options in Backstage View requires its own additional information and gives us access to different facilities and features of PowerPoint 2013. So it's time for a quick tour of Backstage View. First of all, right at the top there is a left pointing arrow and if I click on the left pointing arrow that takes me back to a presentation. So whichever presentation I've accessed this from, press the arrow and I'm back in the presentation again. Click on File and I'm back in Backstage View. The next category down is Info. Now Info is extremely important and a couple of things in this we're going to be looking at in quite a bit of detail. I'm going to come back to Info in just a few moments from now. We'll go down to New. New is the area where I can access what I effectively saw on that Start screen. So I can choose to start a blank presentation or I can choose one of the listed templates or indeed I can search for a template. We'll be using templates later on in the course for creating new presentations and in fact we're going to create a new presentation from a blank quite soon. Open, we've already seen, it gives us access to opening either recent presentations, either recent presentations, ones that are stored on SkyDrive or any presentations that are stored on our computer or a device accessible from it such as an attached external drive or a network drive for example. We click on the save option here to save the current presentation. Click on file to get back into backstage view and if I want to save the presentation that I'm working on under a different name I use save as. We'll look at save as in a couple of minutes from now. Print we've talked about, let's have a look at Share. Now if I click on Share I'm presented with a number of options and which options are available will depend on things like whether I have set up my SkyDrive. The sharing options are to do with making a presentation available to other people either to view or in some cases to work on maybe to read it or to change it or maybe to mark up comments about it. Sharing is something we're going to look at in quite a lot of detail later on in the course. The next option is export and there are various options for exporting a presentation. Again we'll look at these later on but we can for example export a presentation in PDF format or we can do a package presentation for a presentation to go onto a CD for example. We can also use it to create some of the material that go with the presentation, such as creating handouts. And then one other option down here we have is close, which we've already used to close a presentation. Now there are two other options down here, account and options, and I'm going to look at both of those a little bit later on. So let's now go back and take a look at info. Now there's a group of three buttons here, mainly I'm going to cover these later in the course but one of them I want to cover now and that is Protect Presentation. Now if you're working on a presentation and you want to protect the contents 
either for security or confidentiality reasons, or maybe just because you're not ready to show the world the contents of your presentation yet and you don't want prying eyes to see what you're working on, then you can protect the presentation by encrypting it with a password. So click on Protect Presentation, click on Encrypt with Password, and you see this little dialog. Now part of this dialog is a very important warning, caution. If you lose or forget the password, it cannot be recovered. It is advisable to keep a list of passwords and their corresponding document names in a safe place. That is a very important warning. So what we're going to do now is to apply a password to this document. Now I recommend that you use a reasonably complex password, one that may be relatively easy for you to remember but which will be difficult for somebody else to guess. As a general guideline, I tend to go for at least six characters. One of those characters or more would be a numeric digit, and nowadays I generally tend to put in some kind of punctuation character as well. So the password I'm going to use here is T-O-B-Y-A-1 hyphen. Click on OK. You're then asked to enter it a second time. This is to cover a situation where you might have typed it wrongly the first time. You may have thought you'd enter the password, but you made a mistake. Bear in mind that passwords are case sensitive, so you may accidentally, for example, have had the caps lock key on. But let me type that again, T-O-B-Y-A-1 hyphen. Click on OK. And notice that the message next to that button has now changed. It now says a password is required to open this presentation. So what I'm going to do now is to close the presentation and then reopen it. So click on close. PowerPoint asks me, do you want to save the changes? Well, it's very important now that I do save the changes because the main change that I have made is to apply a password. So click on save. The presentation has been closed. What I'm going to do now is to reopen it. So back into Backstage View. Recent presentations. This time, of course, before I work on the presentation, I need to enter the password. So it's T-O-B-Y-A-1 hyphen. Click on OK. And I can access the presentation. Now, if I want to remove the password, it's pretty straightforward. Go into Backstage View again, back to the Info page. Click on Protect Presentation. Encrypt with Password. And all I need to do is to clear that password box so that it's empty. Click on OK. And now the presentation is not protected by a password. So let me now go back into the presentation itself. And I want to show you a couple of other things about the workspace. And in particular, I want to look at the very bottom of the display. And you can see down here what's called the status bar at the bottom. Now the status bar, which is a sort of orangey red in the one that you can see here. I'll talk about these color schemes later on in the course. But there is information on the status bar which is very useful. Much of it is going to make a lot more sense later on in the course. But I'm going to give you a very quick overview of it here. Let's look at the left hand end of the status bar first. There is a count showing you which of your slides is currently selected and how many there are in total. So here it's saying slide one of three. The little symbol there relates to spell checking and review of grammar. We'll come back to that a little bit later on. But then we have the language. This particular presentation has been prepared using the language of English United States. So at the right hand end of the status bar we have another batch of useful pieces of information and some of these are actually controls that we can use, particularly the group in the middle which is a set of buttons that enable us to change the view of the presentation. Now we're going to be talking about views of presentations later on. We're currently in what's called normal view but there are three or four other alternatives that you need to be familiar with. To the left of those view buttons we have notes which we can click to enable us to enter notes to go with the presentation. Comments where we can access the comments related to a presentation. So if I were reviewing this presentation I could add my own comments or I could look at comments that other people had made. 
and then towards the right hand end we have the zoom controls that let us zoom in and out of a presentation to be able to take the broader view or a more detailed view of a slide or indeed of the whole presentation set. Now we're going to come back to zoom later on in the course as well. So having taken that tour of the PowerPoint 2013 workspace, let's now just go one back one more time into backstage view and the info category and look at the right because on the right we have properties and the properties are the properties of the presentation that we're currently working on. This is often called the metadata of a presentation. It's data about the presentation rather than data that's in the presentation. Now the basic metadata is listed here on the right so the title by default gets its title from the first slide in the presentation. The author is here. The identity of the last person to modify it is here. We also have a space here for tags, categories, we keep track of when it was last modified, when it was created and so on. If you click on show all properties at the bottom you get additional properties such as company, subject, which template was used. And if you click on the drop down to the right of the word properties up there and say show document panel a document appears above the slides showing you whichever properties have been defined for this particular presentation. Now the most commonly used properties are here so for instance the author, the title, the subject and so on. I'm going to change the title of this one and I'm going to call it PowerPoint 2013 Example 2 I'm not going to enter any of the other information, but if I look at document properties, there's a drop down to the right there, click on that for advanced properties, and I see a dialogue which has a lot more advanced properties in it. So there is a summary, where again I can enter information in pretty much the same way. So for instance, I can put the company name in there statistics about the presentation, how many slides, how many paragraphs, how many words. It will even tell me what presentation it format it is, in this case it's widescreen, and how much time I've spent editing it. It gives information about the contents, the fonts used, the theme that's used, the slide titles, and then I can define custom properties as well. So as we'll see throughout the course when we add to some of these properties, we can define some fairly comprehensive properties that we can use to analyze our work and to locate particular presentations and so on. Once I've made any changes to the metadata, the properties of the presentation, click OK those properties are saved. On the right of the panel here there's a close button that I can use to close the document information panel. And then if I go back into backstage view on the info page, click on show all properties, the changes I've made such as the company name and so on are shown there. Now you notice that when I entered a title for this presentation I called it PPT 2013 Example 02. I'm now going to save this presentation using that different name. And what I'd like you to do is to open Example 1, add your own metadata to it, so change my name to your name, put in your own company name, or define any of these other items of metadata, such as putting in a subject, adding some tags, putting some comments in and then save this as a different presentation. Now example 02 in the provided files is the example that I'm saving here and so if you save it as example 2 you will delete the one that comes with the course so you may want to call it example 01A or something like that but if you watch now how I save it as example 2 it's pretty straightforward I've made the metadata changes I click on save as choose as a location the current folder which is the folder that the example files are in and I'm going to save it as example 2. Of course there's already an example 2 here because like you I got example 2 with the course so when I click on save it says PowerPoint example 2 already exists do you want to replace it? I'm going to say yes. 
that's now saved and I can see that it's example 2 because it says that in the title bar at the top. So that's the end of this section. I'd like you to make sure that you've saved a 1A or a 2 or even a completely different name if you like and I'll see you in the next section.